Hi, I'm Realtor Sarah Morrow with South State Peak Realty. My guest today on this 15th episode of Proper Tea Time is Bridget Waters of Stage Right Home Staging. Bridget is a Longmont native who has been of service to her clients for many years. Bridget's married with four kids. She was a local hairstylist for 17 years before starting Stage Right in 2016, and she's been successful and very busy all six of those years. With a designer spirit and an eye for color and class, her work makes any room into a people magnet. She loves working with us realtors and advocating for sellers who are looking to earn top dollar on their greatest asset. She also has a passion for making spaces beautiful and for helping fellow Colorado homeowners. Stage Riot is based out of Boulder County, but she services Denver, Weld County, Fort Collins, and she'll travel all across the Front Range. Bridget believes that there's no market, no property type, and no situation where staging won't pay for itself and result in a seller walking away with more money. being here. My pleasure. So let's dive right in. Um, why don't you tell us about Stage Right home, home Staging and how long you've been in business, what you do, and what you love about what you do. I have been in business since 2016 and I love helping uh, homeowners sell their homes and get them ready for the uh, market. Awesome. Can you tell us like what is, I know that when we, when we go into a house we can often tell it's been staged, but what is staging? Is it like really impeccable cleaning? Is it really nice furniture? Is it certain neutral colors? Is it like stuffing all your belongings into storage and getting your house totally looking pristine? I mean, what do you what do you what are you mostly doing? Um, it is all of the above. Uh, it's best if you have it um, professionally cleaned before we come into stage, and we come in and. Uh, hang artwork and place the furniture and make the house look homey. Nice. So is it, is it true that you mostly use, like I said, neutral colors? Is the goal to really have a buyer come in and be able to see their own life and their own stuff and their own sort of brand, if you will, in the home? Absolutely. You're trying for like a universal appeal? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I do say I don't stage in vanilla as far as, you know, all light and white, bright. I like to make it feel homey. I like them to be comfortable. Stats show that the longer somebody is in a house when they're looking at properties, they're more likely to put in an offer. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So do you know any statistics on like by how much the bottom line changes for a seller when it's staged versus when it's not? Is that one of your marketing tools? Absolutely, yeah. Um, staging always pays for itself, and then um, most houses sell for ten to 15,000 more. Okay, cool. So that's sort of something you've seen over time, both in your Absolutely. business and in other yeah. stagers' businesses. Um, is it the sort of thing where I know staging really should happen right away. <laughs> um, have you ever had to come in and swoop in and rescue a, a listing that's sitting and not not selling? Do they still earn more money? Like, does it does it boost appeal? I'm assuming it does boost appeal, and a lot of times, um, a lot of my agents say that I'm just their good luck charm, and they call me, and uh, sometimes I just go and look at it, and they say, "You'll never believe it. We're under contract." Or I go in and I stage it and then they're under contract in another week or two. Um, I do recommend that they do get pictures taken again. And mm -hmm. So you're often, I assume you're called most frequently once the listing agreement's in place, but as soon as, right away is when we need photos. Absolutely. So you try to get in there cleaner, next day staging, next day photos. Yeah. get the listing up. Any um, updating or touch-up painting and stuff needs to be done first, then we stage, and then have a photographer come in like the next day so that you get 30 full days of rental of furniture in the staging. I was going to ask you about that. So staging, there's obviously an upfront cost for what you do, mm -hmm. and then you rent out, is it just furniture, it's artwork, you mentioned is it rugs, pillows, what do you yes. use? Yes. It's all of the above, uh, decor, artwork, and furnishings. Cool. And that they pay per, per month 
for yes. those that one expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there ever a time, you know, we hear kind of different things about the hot market. Like we were at the peak of the market, as we know, February, March of this past year. Of this year. Um, is it ever okay to not stage? Is it like at a low price point? Maybe an as is sort of a situation. Like when is it okay to not stage? Or do you just recommend? I recommend um, for your clients to at least do a pre-listing consultation. Um, and we go in, I go in and we just look at uh, each room and talk about, you know, removing personal things and extra furniture. Um, and, you know, it's just using their, their furniture and their belongings and decor. Um, and we do anything from a one bedroom apartment to condos to townhomes and to, you know, million dollar homes. So you do the whole gamut, any Absolutely. any type. What about commercial? You ever you ever like set up a business or an office? I have, yes. I've done um, a chiropractor's office and also a dental office. Just making it look so, nicer. Yeah, just their waiting rooms and picking out colors and making it look smooth and nice. Inviting. Is there such a package that you offer that's like maybe they don't want their bedroom staged or maybe they need some living areas. Do you ever just do like the kitchen or just the living room or? Absolutely, yeah. If there's just one room that's empty, if a child has moved out or they've gotten rid of some furniture, then yeah, we can come in and do, you know, per room or area or just add some pops of color with artwork and throw pillows. Mm, I bet that makes a big difference. So tell me, I've, I've been in some homes I've been in many homes, of course, and there's a lot of stuff. People have stuff. You know, and I assume when you're a stager, your goal not only is to make a blank canvas and to do your thing, but to like get to reduce the amount of clutter in a home, to reduce yes. the amount of belongings. What if, like, where do they put their stuff during this time of staging? Is it like, do you park them in a storage unit? Is it a pod out back? Is it their garage? What do you see people do for that solution? Um, yes, it's minimizing and packing things away. You're moving anyways, so you might as well go ahead and get the moving boxes out and start packing things up. You can store that in the basement or in a closet. Um, pods are great because you load it up at your house and then have them come and get it and drop it off at your new house. That's true. They can yeah. always just stash it, assuming they have another house. Yeah, and this definitely helps because we're selling the four walls, we're not selling all of your stuff. And uh, people look at those pictures, they get to the third picture and they better be in the house by then. And they decide if they wanna see the house or not. And if they're checking out what book you're reading or what you're saying on your wall is, then they're not looking at your house. It's a really good point. And I admit, I don't really have that skill, that ability to see past what's actually there. Yeah. You know, so it is, it's a blank canvas sort of a situation where like, I do, I get distracted, and I do this for a living. I get yeah. distracted, oh my gosh, look, there they are. I've climbed that same mountain before. Yeah. Oh, look, these guys yeah. like Harry Potter, and so do I. It's, it's very distracting. Exactly, exactly. So. And when you're in there, you know, selling the four walls then, and the home, then you wanna have uh, depersonalizing and minimizing things. You want to get the attention in the right spot. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. Yes. I assume you mostly work with sellers. Is there ever a time when you work with maybe like, I don't know, a landlord or a business owner? Is it just mostly sellers that you're working with? It's mostly sellers. I do know that there are sta some stagers that do a lot of um, uh, ben or, um, Airbnbs. Airbnbs. Yeah. yeah, Airbnbs. I have not. Uh, but mostly just working with realtors and uh, homeowners. So you bring up Airbnb, that's an interesting point. I, um, I wouldn't know where to start. Not only am I not really a designer, but I don't really own that, I'm single, I don't own that much stuff. Do you ever find people, like do you ever consult if I wanted to Airbnb out a, a, a unit of mine? Maybe you just oh, tell yeah, me what to go absolutely. buy? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And is, is your business mostly based, so I, I, I boast that my business is mostly Northern Colorado, particularly Longmont, I like. Where is your, uh, where's your home base and do you do, you do the whole front range? Uh, Longmont and the Boulder area are my home 
base, but I go all the way down into Denver, um, and I try to keep the suburbs um, close, you know, like mostly this area. Sure, yeah. whenever you can. Can you give us, so let's just, I mean, gotta talk dollars here. Can you give my uh, my clients who are sellers and thinking about staging a sense of the cost? You said it pays for itself, which is great, uh -huh. but is it? I mean, how much are we talking for your services, your upfront, maybe a consultation? What does it cost maybe on average to actually stage, say, like a 3-2, like a three-bedroom, two-bath here in Longmont? And does that then, I, I assume those rental fees are add-ons. Can you talk a little bit about your offerings? Yeah, uh, we have different packages. Um, a pre-listing, just going in and talking to the homeowner and getting the house ready for the market is uh, 125 and that comes with notes afterwards um, that I send to the homeowner and to the agent. And then um, we have uh, called an open house package and that's just bringing in 10 to 15 decor items and artwork, just some pops of color. And then like a full staging of a three bedroom, like you said, uh, would be anywhere from 1700 to probably 2500 It's actually really affordable. About 2000 yeah. Okay. And that doesn't include the rental of certain No, it, that does. That doesn't include the furniture. Yeah, the first 30 days of my services and the rental of the furniture. Mm. Another reason to uh, price your home right the first time. Absolutely. Get it sold in that first month. Yes. yes. Can you talk about basements a little bit? Like three bedroom, two bath, I assume you have like, you know, your kitchen stuff that you use, your living room stuff, your bedroom stuff. Assuming the paint and the carpet look okay, what about like an unfinished basement or even a finished basement? I would not necessarily want my <laughs> my buyers down in there. How do you do? Uh, how do you make it look better? Um, just bringing in some bright colors, opening um, the blinds and uh, lighting. Uh, we can always set up um, on a for a bar, or I always recommend if it's an unfinished basement to go get uh, from Kiko some blueprints of different ideas of an exercise room down there, or a game room, movie room, theater. So are you kind of like my stylist where I can show you pics in magazines yeah. <laughs> and you can match sort of ideas? Yeah, absolutely. I love the bar idea. I never even thought that you could stage that and give someone else the idea. Absolutely, yes. Well, I'm pretty much out of questions. I think this was so helpful. I, um, I am curious, like, how do people find you? How can they, do they, do they mostly word of mouth? Do you have a website? I do have a website and also word of mouth. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Stage Right Home Staging. Mm -hmm. Bridget Waters. Yes. Thank you so very much. This was awesome. That's the Thank property. You.